The second part opens with Wednesday and the thing stopping at Jericho's coroner office to further examine the body of a homeless man for potential clues in a case. She also records her findings as she closely inspected the corpse. However, when the sheriff and the coroner arrived at the office, Wednesday hid. The two discussed the case and the coroner showed the sheriff a severed foot from the homeless man, which was missing two toes. After the sheriff left, the coroner noticed one of the doors on the mortuary shelf was cracked open and found Wednesday inside. But she was able to convincingly pretend to be a corpse and was not suspected. In Ms. Thornhill's class, the students were excited about the upcoming raven dance. Xavier tells Wednesday about it, but she was not interested. Later, she snooped around Xavier's mysterious art studio and found a plethora of sketches that looked like the monster. She quickly grabbed some drawings and fled, only to find Xavier outside. He didn't suspect anything and instead wondered if she would ask him to the raven dance. To cover her tracks, Wednesday asked Xavier to accompany her to the dance, which he accepted. Wednesday goes to the sheriff, who carefully compares a sketch with a photo retrieved from a homeless man's camera roll and confirms that they are identical. Despite his initial reluctance, he agrees to collaborate with her, provided that they can provide substantial evidence. Suspicions are aroused towards Xavier, as he possesses the ability to bring artwork to life. Next Wednesday, encounters Tyler, who expresses an interest in her romantically and wants to attend a dance with her. However, she expresses that she needs to prioritize other things. Later, she joins Eugene at a beekeeping club and shows him some sketches, one of which he recognizes as a cave. He takes her to the cave and they discover a claw lodged in the wall. Back at Xavier's art studio, Wednesday searches for evidence to match the claw and finds a bloody rag. However, she is caught by Xavier, who realizes she had ulterior motives for inviting him to the dance. He reveals that he had been haunted by a creature in his dreams, which he had sketched and came to life, scratching him before kicking her out. Wednesday later brings the claw and bloody rag to the sheriff and requests tests be run on them. Meanwhile, Thing writes a note on Wednesday's typewriter and leaves it at a coffee shop for Tyler to read, inviting him to a dance. Tyler shows up at her door with a bouquet and a black gown, which Thing had arranged without her knowledge. Though initially annoyed, upon seeing the dress Wednesday is pleased and forgives Thing. As Tyler lays his eyes on the her, he is immediately surprised. However, Eugene is taken aback when Wednesday unexpectedly changes their plans. She assures him that they will continue their investigation the following day and advises him not to venture into the woods alone. But despite her warnings, Eugene defies her and sets off on a solo journey. At the party, all are amazed to see Wednesday adorned in such a beautiful dress. Xavier, unable to contain his feelings for her, approaches her and confides in her about his ongoing feud with the sheriff's son. Wednesday informs Tyler of her conversation with Xavier, revealing that Tyler used to associate with the bullies who destroyed Xavier's wall painting and assaulted him during last year's outreach day. Tyler explains that he has changed and Wednesday forgives him. Meanwhile, Lucas and his friends plan to take revenge on the outcasts for burning the Joseph Crackstone statue. As Wednesday performs her impressive goth dance steps, the bullies turn on the sprinklers, drenching the dance floor in red paint. Everyone panics and tries to flee, but to no avail. That's when, Wednesday has a vision of Eugene in danger and rushes to the woods to find him. In the woods, Eugene discovers someone has set the cave site on fire and hears the snarls of a creature. Despite calling out for him, Wednesday is unable to reach Eugene in time and he is attacked by the monster. When she finds him, he is covered in blood. As Ms. Thornhill, the class teacher, arrives at the scene, she inquires about Eugene's condition. The scene then shifts and we see Wednesday flipping through her father's police file. 32 years ago, on a stormy night, a young Larissa discovers a dead body in the courtyard of Nevermore. Next we see a young Gomez, holding a sword and covered in blood. Young Morticia is also present at the scene as confesses her love for Gomez. In the next scene it is Nevermore's parents' weekend. The Adams family, Gomez, Morticia, Pugsley, and Lurch, arrive at the event. The principal delivers a speech to the visiting families and students. Meanwhile Enid expresses her disappointment about the arrival of her werewolf family. Gabrielle, Bianca's mother, also makes an appearance at the event. Morticia later visits the principal office where Larissa informs the family that Wednesday's therapist wants them to attend a group session, to which they agree. Meanwhile, Sheriff Galpin inquiries about the DNA test on the monster's claw. While sitting there he receives a call regarding the medical examiner, Dr. Anwar, who has committed suicide. The Adams family then sits with Dr. Valerie Kinbot for a group therapy session, where Pugsley admits that he misses his sister, as do Gomez and Morticia. But then Wednesday pulls out her father's police file and questions the circumstances surrounding the death of Garrett Gates and the involvement of Gomez. Morticia becomes angry with her daughter for bringing up this old case and storms out in frustration. Later, Wednesday informs her mother that she intends to investigate further. Meanwhile, Bianca meets with Gabrielle at a coffee shop, where it is revealed that she is part of a cult called Morning Song, in which she manipulates people for financial gain. 
Gabrielle has apparently married a man Bianca hates. She goes on to threat Bianca, who changed her name upon arriving at Nevermore, to return home soon. Otherwise, Gabrielle will have to reveal that Bianca cheated her way into the academy. In the following scene, Wednesday visits Eugene in the hospital, who is in a coma. She feels guilty for Eugene's condition. Right then, Eugene's mother enter and thanks Wednesday for her friendship, as Eugene never had any friends. The scene then shifts to Sheriffing stopping by the morgue to investigate the death of Dr. Anwar, who left behind a note expressing regret for manipulating a murder case from three decades ago. Upon investigation it is revealed that camera footage is obscured by black gum, so the police are unable to determine the true cause of death. The sheriff suspects that the case Dr. Anwar regretted manipulating was the Garrett Gates case. He now has the evidence to arrest Gomez. So in the next school celebration, Sheriff Galpin interrupts and arrests Gomez. The Adams family is in disbelief as they watch Gomez being taken away in handcuffs. Later, Wednesday and Thing go to visit Gomez in jail and Wednesday demands to know the truth of what happened that night. Gomez reveals that Garrett had become obsessed with Morticia and made advances so Gomez had to take action and confront him. Upon hearing this, Wednesday begins to doubt her father's guilt. Meanwhile, Enid is upset because her mother presents her with brochures for a summer camp that promises to forcefully turn her into a werewolf as she has yet to undergo the transformation. Later, we see Morticia at the meeting place for the nightshades and Wednesday arrives. Morticia reveals to her daughter the truth of what occurred on the fateful night. Gomez was trying to fend off Garrett, but he kept advancing while foaming at the mouth in pure rage. With no other option, she stabbed him. After his body fell onto the courtyard below and was discovered by Larissa, Gomez grabbed the sword and took the blame for Morticia's actions. Upon hearing this, Wednesday wonders if he was suffering from some sort of illness. Morticia agrees with her daughter's thoughts and the two set out on a trip to the Jericho Cemetery. Wednesday starts digging up Garrett's grave in search of evidence, but they are caught midway by the police consequently arrested and thrown into a cell next to Gomez. Lucky for Adams, Wednesday had retrieved a finger from the grave. Its blue tint, indicating that it had been poisoned with nightshade. Right then Wednesday had a vision in which, Garrett's father was seen passing a veil of poison and ordering his son to poison everyone at Nevermore with nightshade. This vial had apparently broken during the mayhem. This led to the realization that Garrett had already been dying when Morticia had stabbed him. After their discovery, Morticia and Wednesday presented their findings to Mayor Walker. Morticia accused him of neglecting his duties. Morticia demanded that Walker release Gomez, threatening to expose his negligence otherwise. In the end, Walker complied and all charges against Gomez were dropped. Next, Sheriff Galpin apologized to Gomez and the two shook hands. Meanwhile, Enid stands up to her mother and insists on being accepted for who she is, including her future transformation into a werewolf. As the parent-teacher weekend comes to a close, Wednesday bids farewell to her family. In the last scene, Wednesday confronts Larissa's after peering through her yearbook. She concludes that Larissa is a shapeshifter. She not only imitated Judy Garland for Nevermore's talent show, but it actually transformed into her. Wednesday realizes that the principal transformed into Rowan the day after his murder to conceal any suspicion of wrongdoing. Larissa defends herself by claiming that she did what she could to keep the school out of any controversy. Right then they hear shouting from outside. Upon investigating, they find the message fire will rain written on the school lawn. That's it for today's recap. Thanks for watching.